Hello and good evening, Twitchies, to the final session of Group 1 for Play Up Legends. How's everyone doing? Awesome! Doing good! Doing good! Doing good. Fantastic. So, uh, before we get right yeah. into it, very quickly, a uh, quick thing. Obviously, um, this is brought to you by our sponsors, Mincha Corner Studio, who you can find on Facebook. They sell 3D printing locally. And when you use tab PlayUp21, you get 10% off your overall bill. Uh, we have WarmongerGamesMalta.com, where you can find anything geek hobby related or board games, etc. And we also have TheGiantsTower.com, where you can find your 3D printed terrain and figures delivered worldwide. And you can use the code PLAYUP15 to get 15% off from your final bill. And obviously, finally, if you like what we do here at PlayUp, you can support us directly on Patreon.com slash PlayUpMT for as little as 3 euros a month. Uh, also, just so that you know, because this is the... Uh, the final episode of the season, we are going to be starting up again pretty soon with a uh, season two, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So, quick introduction my name is Z, I'm going to be the DM for this evening. My lovely character uh, players like to introduce themselves. Um, hi everyone, I'm known on the Twitchies, or known for the Twitchies. Well, I've uh... I'm no, no, I don't know. I'm Magic Man. <laughs> Hello. Name's Ben. It's a really weird introduction. I play uh, Cecil. Little tabaxi kitty. And you can move on now. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Myron, and I'm playing the uh, forest gnome druid Peak. Gavin, you're playing the... Oh, you first, please. I'm Aristelia, um, and I am play playing uh, the rogue, or one of the rogues. And uh, Gavin here playing Falkrangorn, the human cleric. Cool. Okay, so, quick recap. Last session. Um, feel free to dive in, guys, should I forget anything. However, um, last session, basically, you guys were just setting sail out of the city of Brokewood, having just acquired another piece of the telescope, the Maiden's Gaze, for Theodore White Bay. Uh, previously to that, um, in order to um, acquire said piece, you had a discussion with a particularly malevolent individual by the name of Cat Captain Hiccups. Just going to put the volume down slightly over there. Um, as you were setting sail outside of the, um, outside of the bay, you fell under attack from an en enemy ship. The notorious Captain Hiccups was back with a vengeance, ready to reclaim what you had taken from him. You managed to escape. Um, unfortunately, in the crossfire, a member of your party, Gecko, was um, mortally exploded by a cannonball, um, and yes, he did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> However, you, you did manage to find upon his person another piece of the telescope. Who knows how it came to be there? Um, unfortunately, he's not around to tell us. And that would assemble basically the entirety of the telescope, the Maiden's Gaze, together, um, which you did with the help of Theodore White Bay. Um, and he explained to you, well, actually... At this point, I'll sort of hand over to you guys. Um, I know it's been a couple of months, but I'd like to see if you guys remember exactly what he explained and what the last leg of this journey is going to be. <laughs> Everyone's scrambling for the notes. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Did I write this down anywhere? I know, I know that we were going to an island. Yes. Yes, and we were on a ship. Yes. We, we, yes. We've been on a shift since the yes. beginning there, Siggy. <laughs> Not only that, the ship is in the water. <laughs> the ship is, in fact, in the water. I can attest to that, yeah. Okay. No, but I know that we weren't on land. Like, we were on the ship. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes, and the captain has died, unfortunately. Right? Yes, yes. I did forget to... to yes, the captain did die. Yes, too. Yes. Um... 
Also, uh, towards the end, I remember, um, uh, I think it was Falx, who um, had that, was it Falx who had the vision, or was it, one of us had mm. a vision, and this vision was of, um, it was like underwater, wasn't it? I think. There was this big, like, palace, um, uh, I full think, of eyes. A palace yeah, yeah, of... yes, yes. A palace full of eyes. That was it. And that was, uh, I think that was the tail, wasn't it? That we saw? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed it was. It was the palace of eyes, which is the uh, realm of Thail, underwater somewhere. Who knows why? But yeah, um, I believe it was I who had that vision and I explained it to the party, right? Do you remember what you did with the telescope, Falx? Um, I'll be honest, vaguely. Upon using it, um, I believe I spied the Palace of Ice itself or some other... No, it was an island, wasn't it? It was an island um, on which we would find... Well, help me out a little bit here. We would find... There was an artifact that we were looking for, and we'd find it on there. And this, we have to get this artifact uh, before it falls into the wrong hands, right? Exactly. Yes. Before his family, like Theodore's family, dies or something. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. 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 Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And we, correct me if I'm wrong. We did arrive on the island. Have we? You were on the way there. We were, we're on, on the way, way there. Okay. okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, but we, we are going to move forward in the journey a little bit, so don't worry about that. Okay, wow. Did, did I, we get I, the I, details? I, sorry? Did we, get, did we get the details okay? You did indeed. I had all, all, all manner of faith in you guys. Um, <laughs> actually, you got well, it. You, you got it all. Um, yeah, so basically, after a bit of intense ter interrogation, interrogation, um, Theodore decided to come clean with you guys and told you guys there wasn't exactly a treasure. It was there's apparently some artifact, some very powerful artifact out there. That some pretty bad dudes are looking for, and his family is at stake here if he doesn't manage to get there first. And that's about as much as he had wanted to tell you guys. Now, we're going to compress time a little bit and move forward a couple of weeks. During this time, you were aboard Tide Caller. Um, Tide Seeker. Tide Seeker, thank you. I keep on making that mistake. The Tide Seeker. <laughs> Heading in a northeasterly direction through the uncharted seas far past any landmarks that any of you are familiar with. In fact, it has been almost four days since you've even seen any sign of land. Um, going has been pretty smooth. During this time, Falks, you have been pretty much the navigator. You are the only person aboard the ship who is capable of using the um, the telescope, the maiden's gaze, in order to spot this island that you guys are setting sail towards. After 15 days at sea, you hear from crow's nest above you the now familiar voice of Mako, the half-elf, calling out, And HO! You spot in the distance a pretty small landmass. During these two weeks, um, the, ca uh, the, the Tide Seeker has been pretty much captainless. Bosun Dave has mostly been taken on the, um, the role of captain. However, it is clear to him, uh, it's clear to everyone. Dave does not enjoy the um, 
role of being a captain um, and does so begrudgingly until a more suitable person is found for this. He walks up to the front of the ship. Um, you can see him peering over the prow trying to, uh, with a telescope taking a look at the landmass in the distance. Theodore Whitebay is right next to him and they appear to be in silent conversation with each other, in quiet conversation with each other. What are the rest of you doing? I suppose I'd be looking out to see if there's a nice little inlet for us to uh, moor the ship. Um, we have to go to this island. We'll get to that in a moment then, as the island um, draws closer, then we'll get to that in a moment. So where would you be? You'd also be at the prow of the ship in that case? Well, like you said, I'm, I, I have quite a hand in navigating this last leg of the journey, so um, I'd probably be somewhere near the ship's wheel, you know, uh, with, a, with a map and the sextant kind of mapping, uh, mapping our, our course out, so yeah probably be somewhere around there okay will you be handling the ship's wheel sure why not okay what about the rest of you um i think probably cecil is going to be uh below deck um i'd say eating something before we go to the island. Uh, probably he's with Samuel Gordo. <laughs> I'd say he's happy to have you there. I'd say I'm probably looking for Skidmark to see where he hid the good rum. <laughs> he hasn't hid it anywhere, but as you descend the steps, you find a extremely inebriated um, and filthy as ever goblin um, leaning back against one of the large kegs of rum um, in the hull of the ship itself. Um, yeah, and I think cont contrary to our city, I think I'm trying to avoid Skidmark. I think he's still at moments trying, well, not in a bad sense, but you know, since I was the one who offered him that free gift, like a broken plate and, you know, a half-chewed soap, he's I'm, he's still thinking that, you know, I'm somehow some sort of, you know, person he should attach to and look for gifts. So, yeah, I'm every time I'm walking somewhere, I'm looking around the corner trying to avoid skid mark <laughs> as the days go by. <laughs> I love it. Okay, all right. So, um... Uh, Falks, because you're um, on the deck of the ship, <clears throat> um, you see the island approaching, Falks. And when you approach it, it becomes clear that this must be the place. You can see that the island is devoid of trees and any sort of regular plantation. Though that's not to say that nothing grows there. As you draw closer, you can see large columns of colorful, spongy coral and bright red and orange sea anemones and the size of small boulders. Prickly black sea urchins the size of horses, all glistening. <gasps> Surprisingly moist and flourishing beneath the balmy rays of the tropical sun overhead. In the center of the island, rising up from the mass of seafloor vegetation, a temple unlike anything you've ever seen within the New World. The walls themselves look like they are carved from black living barnacle, dark spiky and rough and there are several columns of stone that lead along a pathway to a set of doors um, which from this distance as you peer through your telescope you can see are made of some aged wood that looks like it might have been salvaged from a sunken ship the temple itself looks quite large a, a, a circular fortress cast from black barnacle which has no place existing on the surface of the water. 
Can you draw close enough to the ship uh, to the island, maybe about three hundred yards away or so, and you drop anchor? Theodore comes up next to you, Falks. Uh, comes up the wooden steps onto the um, the prow, the hull, onto the hull of the ship next to the ship's wheel. Tells you, well, we finally found it. Aye. It's been a oddly, oddly quiet trip. Yes, well... Don't know who else might be coming along after us, but thankfully we haven't had had any problems since. I'll be coming down with the rest of you for this. You will. Yes. Um. I feel I should see this part out till the end, at least, for the sake of my family. Good on you. Good on you. Okay. Well, I guess let's capture the others. Indeed, we should. As the five of you gather um, around a small boat, which can be dropped down as a landing party off to the island, um, Peak, you notice a skid mark um, peering round. Uh, one of the ste- uh, one of the doors, looking at you, um, and he shuffles up to the ship and goes, "Master Peak, you bring back something nice for for Skid Skidmark. You bring back something nice for Skidmark. Yes, uh, yes. I'll um, uh, yeah. I'll definitely try and find something. Uh, um, I must be on my way now." Like many shiny kind of... things there, many yeah. shiny! <laughs> and I try to kind of scuttle off, pick up my stuff quickly <laughs> as I head to meet the other members. Okay. Um, on the deck of the ship where you, where you find the rest of your crew, uh, where you find the rest of your party, uh, Boson Dave is also there. Um, just you got everything. Um, you got your flick knives, your knuckle dusters, your your big uh, hitty sticks. You got everything that you need. Extra swords. We'll make do, Bosun. Right, guys. We'll make do. We always do. All right then. Well, best of luck. And uh, he, he saw shoots Theodore a bit of a glare. Hi. Just best of luck. Boat is low, lowered down to the water, uh, to the water's surface. And you row towards the island. It doesn't take long, maybe 15, 20 minutes before the um, the prow of the boat hits the sandy shore, and you can drag the boat up onto the shore itself. As you do so, you look around at the peculiar vegetation around you, um, the large black sea urchins, the um, sea anemones that seem to move with an unseen breeze. There's an odor here, a smell of something very old, something that was forgotten at the bottom of the ocean a long time ago. Smell of something which is abandoned and forbidden. Hairs on your arms and standing up straight. You feel that you're being watched. Is it the Is smell it the... of decay? Of like something that's dead? It's the smell of something that... Um... Like old salt? Like? Old salt. Like, you know how the, when the, the sea washes up like a lot of... Yeah. Like, Grime and, and salt and seaweed like that. That oh, sort of smell, yes. Like, okay. like, like when you when you go to the beach and there's like a huge bank of seaweed just yeah. standing next to that and smelling that. That smell of something that it's not supposed to be up here. It's supposed to be at the bottom of the ocean. It shouldn't be here. That's the sort of smell that you smell around you. You also notice the excessive silence in the air. Overhead, there are 
no gulls calling out, nor do the waves um, lap at the shore of the island in a way that makes any sort of sound. In fact, as you peer around, you, you, you notice for the first time that the entire sea around the island appears to be perfectly still, like a sheet of glass. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this is a bit metagamey, but considering that I know that this place has a connection to Thale, right? Mm -hmm. Could I possibly roll like an insight or a mold religion to see if this place is... Can uh, you give me an arcana like, check? An arcana check? Sure. Mm -hmm. Great, a plus zero. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'd say if you want to do religion instead, religion works too for this. In that case, it's a thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, sure. Um, what what are you doing exactly? Just so that I can get an idea of what you want. So, um. I'm, I kind of want to get an idea of if this place is somewhere which seems desecrated, like if it w used to be a place mm -hmm. of Thale and now it's uh, corrupted in some way, or if it's not exactly like that, if it's kind of like a holy place, even if it's if it smells all manky, like you're describing, you know? It doesn't necessarily mean evil. Huh. That's, uh... Funnily enough, a tough question. Okay, um... Well, I got a 13, so... Mm -hmm. now, with a 13, I'll still give you something for that. Um, to do this, you would need to open your mind and look at the spell weave, Falks. What you do, you, you know how to do this. You know how to meditate for a few moments um, and... Close your eyes, open your mind, and tap into the spell weave around you, which you can almost visualize around you as the um, invisible magical network, um, the ley lines of arcana and the divine energy that surround and connect all living things. For you, it has always appeared as uh, fishing lines in the air, and obviously through the waves and water as well. Over here... Alks, the spell weave is different. For one thing, yes, you definitely feel a very strong connection to the divinity that you associate with Thale. But it's different. It's not the same. It feels as old as Thale, but it doesn't have the same quality that you expect from Thale. Like, for example, when if you're used to eating white bread and someone gives you brown bread, you know it's bread, but it's not the same quality. I'm not saying it's a better or worse quality, but it's not the same quality. No, I get you, I get you. It's still bread. It's, it's still the divinity that you associate with Thale, but different. It's like white chocolate and dark chocolate, am I right? Still chocolate, but... Still chocolate, but different. <laughs> different. Um, are we still on the small? Are we still on the boat to heading towards the island, or have we reached the island? You're on the shore. You're on the shore. Okay. Okay. How Spence how far? Funny, Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. How so? You describe there are these like pillars leading to the temple. Mm -hmm. How far is this walk to the temple, or or is it just like a few pillars and we see the and like we're at the door? So the island itself is surprisingly small. Um, have you ever seen a sandbank? Okay. Oh, so uh -huh. literally, it's like a a chunk of landmass almost. This cut is perfectly. like you, you you can see 
to the other side of the island um, partially like I said there are several um, several columns of coral and sea uh, large sea urchins and sea anemones but even approaching the island with um, with the ship you could clearly make out the dimensions of the island this island is uh, perhaps a quarter of the size of Gozo um, Wait, now I'm scared to give a, an, ex, uh, <laughs> an exact this is because I don't know how much that is. I might piss off a Gosselton. Um, okay, it's, is it it's more about like Comino? The... Yeah, yeah, it's more like Comino. Thank you. It's more like Comino. Okay, so maybe a kilometer across. You can clearly see to the other side. Um, the temple is in the center of the island. And like I said, there's a pathway of pillars leading up to the circular temple. The pathway, um, uh, the pathway leads down about halfway down the island. You can see the pillars that make out where exactly it begins. Okay. You still have the maiden's gaze telescope, by the way, of course, Falks. This place feels funny, guys. It feels different, like it's connected to Thale, but I can't explain it. And as I say that, I put the uh, the Maiden's Gaze to my eye and I take a look around. What do you see, Falx? Do you see anything? As you look around, Falx, give me a perception check. Can I use my passive? 22. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm about to take that feat for perception specifically. Do you look around? It's funny. Now it's always been pretty easy for you to pinpoint the source of whatever this telescope is supposed to be looking at this creature um, that I mentioned to you with uh, red eyes that seems to live in this dark area. This time, as you're looking around, you see nothing. And then it occurs to you to look down. And when you look downwards, you can see that the creature appears to be approximately maybe 50 feet or so, below the temple itself. What was that? I saw it. I saw the thing. The monster. It's 50 feet. It's around 50 feet below the church. Maybe it's under some... behind some door or something. We'd have to go inside to find out. Now... Okay. But what if... Are we sure that this artifact we need is with this monster? Maybe we can avoid it if it's 50 meters below the temple there, Falx? Maybe? And is it asleep? Uh, it was not asleep. It's awake. Right? The tales do not say whether or not the, the um, artifact is guarded by the creature or on the creature itself. Okay. If you want to try to sneak in and take it all, you know, uh, underhandedly, I mean, go ahead. It's better than fighting that thing. I'm not sneaking in alone. Definitely in not. You, but somebody needs to keep an eye on Theodore. I point at my heavy armor. I am not going to sneak in. I am coming with you lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, Mr. Are you capable in a fight anyway, Theodore? Hmm? I said, are you capable in a fight anyway, Theodore? I um... think he's pretty capable. Remember what he did last time on the ship when we tried to confront him? Mm. Hmm. That That's sneaky uh, guy is pretty pig... nimble on his yeah. feet. Pig Butson says, yes, he's capable, but uh, will he really help out? Well... I will help. I... I will help. Um, 
I'm decent with a sword, but I'm better keeping myself alive than um, uh, the uh, adventuring that you guys do. Mm -hmm. Very uh, not not very reassuring, right there. So uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's just uh, make our way to the temple, shall we? Let's make our way. Let's make our way. Okay. Um. I, uh, I would like to take charge and lead the group. Just, uh, just so that if I walk into any uh, very harmful slash deadly booby traps, I can take the brunt of the hit and not the rest of the party. Okay. <laughs> the way you said you take charge, I thought you are going to run to the door. <laughs> oh, no, no. I just want to stay front, front line. Maybe a little bit before the party. Okay. Is there anything special about the door? So, um, when you guys get to the pathway, um, the the stone, both um, both of the path itself and also the pillars around you, like I said, it's this really spiky, rough um, black barnacle. Um, seems to have been hewn. Seems to have been carved and made, but in a um, not in um not in a masonry fashion that you've ever seen before um as you make your way up um towards the door you can see it's a large set of double doors made out of aged wood um that are about twice the size of normal um of a normal average sized person they have no knockers or um rings or any sort of um knobs anything like that in order to open them though can mm. we just push the door or does it look like light enough to go or is it just it looks very heavy um Wait. before arcelia touches it, the door oh no i haven't touched it oh okay I touched it. no no P no, no. Peek, Peek asks, um, should I try to sense if there is anything magical with this entrance? Maybe it should. In that case, uh, Peek would like to cast Detect Magic, focusing on the door and its surroundings. Okay. As you um, as you do so and focus on the door itself, you don't notice any sort of magic coming from the door. However, your detect magic is like a radar, right? So you do notice the um, magical um, energy coming from the different beings that I um, told you about last session. And the temple itself, no magic seems to come uh, from it, not within 30 feet of you, anyway. Mm. I think it's a 30 foot radius, if I'm It is, correct. yes, 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 yes. I'd like to walk up to the doors. Oh, wait, no. No, no, wait. Oh, wait. Are we doing this? Detect magic detects divine energy. Um, it detects any, any type, any type of... of magic. Yes, then and I find you... out what what school that magic is from. Okay, all right, okay. Um, this is uh, less about school and more about just like the type of um, magic. Like I told you last time, more like focusing on arcane or divine or eldritch. You can definitely detect remnants, n nothing that is a contraption or trap or anything like that just the remnants of divine magic within the area okay uh, i obviously i relay my findings to the to the party and uh still say it's a bit of a mystery how we're going to get this door open unless falx has a another idea well um this place does feel connected to fail, so maybe there is something I could try. Maybe try saying a prayer. I was about to say that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'd like to walk up to the door. 
and place my hands on it. Does anything happen so far? No, the doors appear to be solid. And I, I push them. Complete resistance, right? They're surprisingly heavy. There's a slight give. It's a slight give, um, but they're really, really heavy. Um, I start muttering a few prayers to Thay, like, you know, the, the common prayers, um, the, the equivalents to our father, you know? Mm hmm Anything? Are you using any particular spell to, to, to speak to him like this? Uh, I could use a first level spell slot to sort of like empower my prayer, so to speak. Sure. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and give me a religion check? Meanwhile, um, peak. Whilst this is going on, something wanders into your field of detect magic. I suppose field. Yeah, your range of detect magic. Beyond the doors, you sense a magical being right on the edge of your vision, uh, right on the edge of your range, coming into your range on one side and then leaving your range as if, uh, as if it's just walking past the door. This is behind. Uh, I immediately lift my staff to grabs everyone at grabs everyone attention, and um, I say, I, "I'm I'm sensing there is something behind the door, something of magical, uh, something that's uh, something of magical nature." Meanwhile, what was your religion check, Falks? Before I tell you that, since this is about, you know, my god specifically, mm -hmm. could I possibly maybe get advantage? Yeah, for sure. Right. Oh, one thing, please note down, everyone, I forgot to tell you at the start, you all have a point of inspiration for, for the, this session. Okay. Ooh, nice. Thank you. I want to start including that. I always forget to do it, and I need to make it into a habit. Wow. Check the check roll 20. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, because you're doing this with a spell slot, um, the, 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 you can still get something out of this. What you get is um, trying, as you reach out and you try to speak to your god, you do hear or rather feel something back. But it doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel like Thale's normal presence and Thale's normal response. It does feel like Thale, but not like Thale. It feels, rather than reassuring and commanding, as Thale always has been, a more hostile nature. Just like we said about the white and black chocolate, um, white and dark chocolate, this would be more like you bit into a chocolate and you found out that someone had put jalapenos in your chocolate. Ooh. Still chocolate, but... Not what you wanted. <laughs> Phil, oh, not Phil. Falks can't help but remember um, what other character we met. The one who he tried to induct into the Church of Thale, who ended up betraying us mm -hmm. uh, with that captain, and how he described the god he worshipped, and how it was similar to Thale, but seemed quite a bit darker. Could this have any connection? Might do. That's interesting. What was, what was it that that character called? Was it the... Uh, the, the Devourer. I address my prayer rather than to fail. I address it to the devourer. You sense the same hostile reaction. Sense of something not wanting you to be where you are at the moment. The... Meanwhile, Peek, you were doing something, I apologize. 
I was going to ask what I'm sensing behind this door. Is it mm -hmm. the sense that something or someone is pacing behind the door? Or it's exactly what it felt like, yes. Someone not, is... not pacing back and forth, just paced by the, by just the door. Just paced That's by it. the door. Um... Oh, and the, the being, um, the magical being, had divine energy coming from it. Divine energy. As, you know, Falx is, uh, you know, muttering these prayers, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't do it to interrupt him, but I let him know about this, that there is, uh, I am sensing uh, a being of divine energy inside, whether this being, you know, is our enemy or not, uh, I don't know. I can't sense their intentions. Um... I mean, Peak really doesn't have anything, unfortunately, prepared for such a situation. Um, I guess, like, maybe... Uh, has, no one's touched the door yet, or has have we touched the door? Uh, no, I put my hands on it. I put my hands okay. on it. There is nothing, you know, on the door that looks like a small outlet or a hole or anything like that. Give me an investigation check. No. You watch. There's a there's there's like a keyhole. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> no one asked. No one. <laughs> Classic. Uh, Nineteen. <laughs> Woo! Okay. There's a keyhole. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a doorknob. <laughs> there is no nothing actually. <laughs> there is nothing really. Really. Nothing at all. Nothing. There's nothing. Okay. There is Not like... even. Next to the door, is there like a, a window or something? Nothing at all? Not even a crack or an opening? I'm glad that you asked that, actually. Mm -hmm. There are no windows, no slits, nothing whatsoever that you noticed coming up to this fortress. It appears to be made out of just continuous barnacle all along it. Um... Fox would like to point out, uh, especially I didn't after mention, what... but it is a domed roof as well, and it appears to be solid in nature. Sorry, Falx, you were saying? Yeah, uh, when Peek mentioned those spirits, Falx would have responded by saying, uh, I, feel, I feel a very funny spirit over here, almost as if it's, it doesn't want us to be here, so if you're seeing anything... Assume it's going to be hostile. I don't think there is anything, actually. You know, and actually, looking around, the whole structure, the way it is, doesn't remind me of a temple. Because temple, temples are made to welcome people, right? So they would have windows and, and maybe uh, entrances. But this has only one, with no windows. I think this structure was made to keep something in and not welcome people from outside. It's we... it's funny you mentioned that because temples to Thale don't have windows. Can we throw some water at the door? <laughs> wait, sure. wait, okay. Understand, understand my reasoning here. If if this temple is outside of the water, why is that? Why is is it not safer to have it in the water? Would water be the unlocking element? I don't know. It's I, not a bad idea. In fact, Peak was gonna Peak was gonna point out the description we're getting is something very old. Could it be this ra was raised from the bottom? Yeah. Of the okay, ocean. Yeah. I I grab my my water pouch and I I throw it. I ask Falx to move out of the way and I throw it at the. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm just wetting the door. And be okay. You're just wetting the door. All right. Okay. Shh. Um. As the water splashes against the wood, um, like I told you, this is very aged looking wood. This is, looks like something that was ripped out of the bottom of a sunken ship and formed into two large wooden doors. As the water splashes against the wood, the, the wet patch is almost instantly absorbed into the wood itself with a creak. No way. 
Well done. Doors open well done. <laughs> outwards. Outward. Mm. Well, doors should open that way, I guess. Uh, doors open inwards usually, because you are walking into it, not out of it. <laughs> I still can't believe that worked. <laughs> As your eyes adjust to the gloom within the temple itself, you see several sets of yellow eyes peering at you through the gloom, and you hear. <laughs> and we're going to take a 10 minute break. Oh. Peek looks Rick. down at his stomach thinking, oh, I haven't eaten anything this morning. <laughs> You've been done with me, with Samuel Gordo. <laughs> with Samuel Gordo! <laughs> okay, guys, um, I, I need to go and peep very desperately. And I will see you guys in 10 minutes. Um, if you guys want to come back earlier, uh, we can have a little chat about stuff. See you in a okay. bit. See ya.
We live? Yes, we are. Awesome. Okay. So, ah, the doors creak open, and you can see in the gloom beyond several yellow eyes staring back at you out of the darkness beyond. And quietly, silently, closed. The eyes or the door closes? The eyes. The eyes. The eyes. Because they roll the really good stealth check. <laughs> um. Shall we stay outside? <laughs> that, yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> mm, uh, I don't know. We should. But we can't. No one here has dog vision, right? Um, I, I no. don't. I don't think so. I don't know. think. I just double check. Gnomes don't have dark vision for whatever peculiar. Actually, I, I do have dark vision. Um, yes, I do. I do. Um, Tabaxi have I... dark vision. I do have dark vision as well. Yeah, sixty feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. Yeah, oh, so me too, maybe me halflings too. that don't. Okay, so the people with dark vision, um, what you see beyond in the gloom, just right at the edge of your vision before they skitter off into the darkness, are these creatures that look... Uh, so, you see very large, bulbous eyes that pop out of the sockets and hang upon a chin that slopes downwards towards very jagged teeth, and a lower jaw that comes upwards with teeth that interlock with the upper teeth themselves. Mm. Um, you can see um, a sort of dangling thing above their head that comes down in front of their face, and a bulb that sort of swishes back and forth. These creatures are hunched over, um, long, elongated arms, um, and their bodies appear to be quite lithe in nature as they skitter backwards into the gloom beyond. Do you have a picture of any chunks? No. no, I don't. Um, <laughs> I can find There's... one that is similar to what I have in my head, because these are creatures that I took and then modded heavily from the monster manual, but... Yeah, isn't it almost I'm like a similar? Yes, please. I'm getting like Mariana Trench Koatoa vibes. There's a small picture on uh, on the stream, but it's just of their eyes. There is? Yeah. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. didn't do that. That was done. That's neat. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah, do... I can upload something. Um, shall Is... I put it onto the map page? Uh, you, you, yeah, yeah, that would be handy. It would peak. Um, would peak know anything about such creatures? No. No. Um, however, you you could tell that they were definitely creatures that um, look more comfortable in the water than on land. Oh, okay. I will pop them into the into the map. Uh, sorry, into the roll twenty. Once you guys actually encounter these creatures properly, let's put it that way. Can I do something? Hmm? Um, is there like a pebble on the ground or something like that? A small rock. Um, sure. Is now. Um. Okay. Sorry. Do you want to use what? the rest of my water instead? For what? Okay, no, I, just continue. I thought we were going to throw the rock. Would you want to throw water instead? I was going to cast light on the rock and then throw it in so that we can see what there is inside. Ah, very, very nice. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I'd like to do that. I basically I pick up a, a pebble or a rock or something, and um, my eyes flash um, a verdant azure for just a second, and that light you see flash into my eyes pours down my face and into the pebble, which starts glowing like, 
Like, have you guys ever been um, inside like a cove uh, which has a bit of a roof and, and when the sun is reflecting off the water, it creates that sort of like a shimmering glow? It looks a bit like that anyway. Um, and I throw that pebble into the middle of the temple to see if, if these things react in any particular way to bright light. It's a 20 foot radius if it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, how far do you, uh, actually go ahead and give me a ranged attack. Sure. I uh, just, uh, your, your strength, um, yeah, just add your strength to that. Are there any, uh, like torches on the walls, candles? It's completely dark in there. Okay. What was that? Yeah, I got it. I got five. Five. Okay, sure. Um, you managed to toss it about 30 feet in. Um, when it lands with a clatter, um, you said a 20 foot radius. You can see almost right at the edge um, of the range of the light, there appears to be a wall coming up. Or I threw it to the other end of the wall. Not that you could tell. The the temple is not huge, but you definitely didn't make it across to the other side. So um, the wall. Yes. So you know the wall is thirty feet long. I I want I want to uh, walk in. And uh, just walk in, investigate. Maybe, maybe even pick up. If I pick up the rock with the light, um, the light will stay on there, right? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I pick up the rock the with the light way. and have investigate around a little bit. So give me a second. Just as you step beyond the threshold of the um, of the entrance, the doors begin to slowly. <laughs> Close. Uh -oh. Quickly get the water. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe, maybe. Does, does, there's, no me. there's no reaction to the water as the doors are closing, as you splash water onto it. Ice, uh, come on, come on, just run in. And, you know, Cecil is like, come yeah. on, with his I, tiny little paws. <laughs> I, I rush in, rush in, I guess. I guess. Yeah, we, go, we go in. We is, go uh, in. is Theodore go in. joining in? I'm grabbing <laughs> the he, he hobbles along behind you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, he's dragged. <laughs> <laughs> no need for Raffhausen. Uh, okay. Um, as the doors... <laughs> Close shut behind you. Area is suddenly illuminated. So let me paint you guys a picture. You are in a very large circular room. Mm -hmm. In the center, um, let's say it's about uh, about 120 feet across from one side to the other. A large circular room like so. In the center of the room stands. A circular, another circular stone room that has a door in front of it. This room, however, is only about 30 feet across and it is made of the same dark, shiny, uh, spiky barnacle. Um, and it reaches up all the way to the top, to the dome of this temple, whatever you guys are calling it now. It reaches all the way to the very top of the dome. The place is illuminated now, however, because you can see that there are windows all along the walls of the temple. Little slits, and coming in from them is a, a pale white, whitish blue light. Not the light of day. You can also see in the dome itself there are a couple of places where um, the roof has caved in slightly and a few, um, a few pieces have fallen down. In fact, you notice some debris on the floor around you and you can see 
um, pale white light coming in and illuminating parts of the room. Like I said, the room is very well, uh, the temple is very well illuminated now by these several slits all around, all around the walls. And you can see surrounding you these creatures, and I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the thing now, into roll 20. Nice. Should render for you in a moment. Um, these creatures, um, again, that that's just sort of, what I was thinking of is not exactly what I wanted. Um, it, they're supposed to have like a stalk that comes down in front of their eyes with a bulbous thing in front of it. Think like a cross between a human and an angler fish sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and with much larger teeth that sort of interlock together. Um, these four creatures standing around you. Um, two of them are holding, uh, sorry, all four of them are holding large tridents, um, the prongs of which sort of curve inwards and then come out once more, and they're all pointing them at you. All of them are making this sort of <laughs> sound as they advance towards you guys. Wonderful. Can we reply in kind? You can't try. <laughs> There's no reaction. <laughs> I I have the spell tongues. Hmm? Um, the spell grants the creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language it hears. Moreover, when the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language and can hear the target understand what it says. I'd like to cast. I'd like to cast tongues on Siggy's character. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So basically, nice. I'm going, oh, and anyways. <laughs> so, uh, is, is, is this, does this spell have any um, semantic or verbal components, or can this be done without anyone noticing? Like, does she know that you're doing this? Is my question. Uh, verbal and material. Well, I always say that when I cast a spell, I'm muttering prayers to. Uh, to Thail, so Siggy will hear a few, uh, you know, she, she might hear uh, Fox, Fox uh, muttering under his breath, you know, a few words. Then all of a sudden her, her tongue morphs in her mouth and um, she, she starts speaking funny. So, Siggy, you hear... You are not supposed to be here! No. Oh. Again, can I reply what with? But we're here yeah, now. You, you can just speak. Um, they'll understand you. It's just the Isle of the Maiden. You are not welcome here. But I myself am a maiden. Would I not be welcome if I am one? No. So how? Uh, we, we were invited. Do not lie. We were invited by the maiden herself. Maiden has not spoken to anyone in 700 years. Well, how would you know if she hasn't spoken to you? We what? are gods of the maiden. Well, do you know everything that she does? I look confused for a moment and go, yes. You, you guard her, but... You don't necessarily know everything that she does. You that are mean, not that welcome here. Well, then what can we do if the door is closed behind us? See them raising up the spears towards you and go, This is your last chance. Leave. Well, how can we leave? We're trying to leave. How do we leave? I get out the telescope. Yes, but the door is closed. At this open point, can it. I... How do we open it? We do not know. So how are you telling us to leave if you don't know how to get us out? That is a you problem. No, that is an us problem. They we are all in here together. You. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> and I... I... I, I think Cecil would take the opportunity to say, um, if if she turns to us and said, I tried, 
in oh in, right oh, now in... you can just hear her speaking whatever there is yes 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 because <laughs> i was going to say like if she turned to us and said i tried i i would say Cecil would say something like we didn't understand a word you said this has all been gibberish and like <laughs> run where run. are we going to run just hide <laughs> I'd like to... Uh, Cecil draws Catatonia, ready for the fight. And with that, I'd like you all to roll your math rocks and give me your initiative number, please. Math rocks. Bloop. This is not the sort of music I was hoping for. That's the one. Thank you. Okay, 21 plus, please. Me. Yeah. 22. Nice. Just give me your AC so that uh, I know. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, 13. 13. Okay. Anyone else 21 plus? No. 15 to 20. Lower. No. 11 to 15. Uh, 12. And my AC is 14. Okay. Six to ten? Nine. And my eight. Nine? And my eight. Eight. Trying to regulate the music. I'm sorry, give me a moment. Does that sound okay? Much better. Okay. Uh, Siggy, I'm hearing the feedback from you. I can't do anything about Not it. It's okay, I'm going to have to turn off the music in that case, though. Um, mm -hmm. No worries, so, Arcelia? Uh, what's your AC, Arcelia? 14. Much? 14. Thank you. Okay, so that'll leave Falks. What you get, buddy? Uh, 7. Okay, what's your AC, please, buddy? 18. 18. Okay, so that means Cecil, you're up first, and then um, two of the creatures are up next. Cecil, what would you like to do? These creatures are rushing towards you. They sort of um, are on both sides of you. They have you a little bit surrounded. Um, two are coming from one side, two from the other side. What would you like to do? Um, right, I would like to attack with um, Catatonia. Uh, okay. Um, just, how many did you say are coming towards me, specifically? Uh, well, I'm I'm imagining that the five of you are grouped up together. Yeah. And there's two on either side of you coming towards you. Okay. Well, I'll just okay. go towards the uh, one it that's closest. It mm -hmm. makes a difference. It makes a difference. You you guys also notice that on either side of the two groups, one on either side of them appears to have um, this large necklace made of pearls around their neck. Um. Yes, it does kind of make a difference, because they kind of look more like leaders now. <laughs> okay. Um, so I want to go to, I want to attack one that's got pearls. Okay, go for it. Nice. So there's Catatonia. Oh. I'm going to turn off the screen sharing for combat music. However, I'm going to post it in the chat if you wish to follow along. That is what we're listening to right now, and I'll even be kind to the Twitchy chat um, the Twitchy chat as well. There we go. Okay. So that is what I'm listening to right now, whilst I destroy my players. I mean, whilst my players kill these things. Yeah, whilst um, you destroy your players is more accurate because I rolled a ten. Does that help? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Um, no. As you rush up to one of the ones with the pearls, um, it jabs the shaft of the trident towards you and blocks Catatonia. You can you still have your bonus action if you want to draw out another blade and make another attack. I would like to attack with a dagger, yes, please. Go for it. Oh, that's an 11. <laughs> uh, second block, unfortunately. Oof, um, okay. The other one, um, not the one with the pearls, the other one that's uh, next to him um, is going to turn towards you, um, mm -hmm. Cecil, and yep. he's going to go ahead and make an attack. That is um, 16 to hit, so that is going to hit. Yep. Give me the damage. <laughs> okay, 
So his first attack, his bite attack, is going to do nine damage to you. Ooh, okay. Um, and then he's going to use his spear to jab at you. Uh huh. Um, that's also going to be sixteen to hit. Okay. That's going to be ten damage. Ten. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Second one, rushing up from the other side. Um, he picks a target. Let's see. One, two, three. Three. He spots you, Peak, hiding in amongst the others and is going to try and bite you. That is going to be 21 to hit, so that will definitely hit. Um, and that is going to be 7 damage. And then he's going to turn to, let's see, number one, that's going to be Falx. Falx, that is nine to hit, so that does not hit. That is their turn. The other two, the ones with pearls, you, you see the first one raising up his arm towards you, um, Cecil. And I need you to go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw, please. Nice. Need to beat 12. Two. <laughs> Two. Um, you suddenly <laughs> notice from the ground these spectral um, chains that appear to be made out of rusted metal covered mm -hmm. in algae wrapping around you and boom, holding, you, um, holding you in place. You are currently paralyzed. Paralyzed? Is, indeed. So I can't move at all? You cannot move at the moment. Um, the second one is going to raise up its hand, um, and you see a, another trident made almost like out of water that has taken physical form, shaping into a trident, and then flying towards you guys. It's going to go for Siggy, and it's going to be 18 to hit. Siggy, I think that'll hit you. Quite well. Yes. All right. Okay, so that is going to be... Oof, that's a lot of damage. Um, that's going to be nine damage um, as, the tri as the water trident strikes you. It hurts for a moment as it pierces you before poof, um, dispelling back into water itself. You're up next, Arcelia. You're on deck. Peek, what are you doing? Um, the creatures with the pearls. Um, mm -hmm. There's two of them, you said, right? Indeed. Are they clumped up? No. There are there is one without the pearls and one with one. For the sake of clarity, the ones with the pearls, because they've cast spells, we're going to call them the spell casters. Okay. We're going to call the other guys the melee guys. There okay. is one melee guy and spell caster um dealing with Cecil right now. Um mm -hmm. one spell caster on the other side of the group that is um using the um water trident, and one melee guy that has come right up to the group and is fighting you guys. Okay, um, in that case, their positioning in Tangle doesn't sound like it's going to be on any benefit to us, is it, guys? No. No, okay. They are very spread out. Okay. At some point, can I scream at the others while they're fighting what they told me? That we are in the house of the Maiden? You, uh, if it's under three seconds, then yes. But on your turn. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do to start off with is... I am going to cast Ice Knife, not on the guy attacking me, but the spellcaster of this group that's a bit further away. Am I right saying that? Hmm? Yeah? So how far is he? Is he within range? Oh, maybe about feet? 20 feet. Oh, okay, maybe okay. Feet. Yes, okay. yes, yes, more than enough. So even though this guy is in front of me biting me, I kind of... My my reaction wasn't correct, and I kind of peek quickly, summons this ice knife, and tries to throw it at this uh, spell casting weird creature. <laughs> All right, let me. Uh, oh, I forgot. Did it get sent to the end beyond? No idea. It, it did. It yes. got sent to roll twenty. Roll twenty. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So fourteen. I'll hit. Yeah. Brilliant. And that I cast it as a first level for now, just holding okay. my big spells towards the end. And that is an eight. Okay. 
Uh, actually, it's a bit more. Oh, okay. So no. So on hit, yeah, the shard explodes, and the target and each creature within five feet of it. I don't think there is. Is there? No, it's just it for now. Then that's it. Then pieces of shards of the ice just go all around, and that's it. Okay. Wait, but the target as well. So does it take extra damage from that? Um, the target and each creature, it actually does, yes. Um, that takes an extra six. All right. Okay, it's covered in ice shards <laughs> right now. And you just hear it going... <laughs> do I understand it? Yes, you do. What you <laughs> understand is... Leave us alone! And that is it for me. Okay, then Arcelia, you're up. Falx, you're on deck. Okay, so... Arcelia, I... what are you doing? It, it's right in front of me, right? Yep, this one's just rushed right up to you guys and is engaging you guys at the moment. Okay, so I grab my rapier and I'm gonna slash while also screaming to the others, We're in the house of the maiden! They don't like us! And slash. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay. Give me a second, because it's taking a bit of time to load. All right. Seven. Seven. Oh, that will definitely not hit, I'm afraid. Um, you're using a rapier, uh, which is not a light weapon, so that would be your attack. You still have your bonus action if you want to hide or disengage or something like that. And I disengage. Actually, what you can do if you'd like, you're supposed to declare this before the attack, but I I'll let that slide. You can steady aim, stay exactly where you are, and roll that again, um, giving yourself advantage, basically. Can I do that? But you that... won't be able to use your movement at all this turn. It's okay. <laughs> and go so for it. Roll... So roll again. 25. Natural 20. Natural Ooh. 20. All right. Okay. okay. Go ahead Go. and roll that damage. Oh, and um, that's with advantage, so that also has sneak attack damage with it as well. Okay. So, three plus... Uh, why aren't you loading? It's a 1d8 plus 2d6 plus your dexterity. So, plus 2d6. Plus whatever your dexterity modifier is. Give it a second to load. Meanwhile, Falx, you're on deck. So that's 11 for the 2d6 plus... Wait, it's a crit, so um, the it's roll another 1d8 plus 2d6. So. That's a lot of damage. Plus. It's a crit. That is a six. So we got a three, an eleven. Plus another two d six. Yes. So then a six, uh -huh. and then two d six plus. No, nothing. There's no plus. There's no plus. Just that. Okay. So that's uh. The second one d eight plus two. I count twenty four. Fourteen. No 18. plus two dex. Yeah, the two decks is coming in the first roll. Okay. 1d8 plus 2. Yes. So that is 24 damage. Wow, all right. That's a hell of a lot of damage. You carve um, a long swath across this creature and blood pff, spurts outwards. It is bloodied. It's very bloodied. Onto me. Um, in response to that, it's just going very quickly, uh, scream out, <coughs> but Arcelia, you understand, we are the guardians! Slowly becoming Skidmark for some reason. Falx, you're up next. Um, are these creatures positioned within 15 feet of each other? Hmm... The one that's engaging you guys and the two that are on Cecil nearby, yes. Okay, I'd like to position myself in such a way that um, I can hit them with a 15-foot cone, but 
but uh, avoid my allies. Is that Your possible? Your allies are all in the mix. I can't, like, r jump to the side or something? There is... The creature is here. You guys are all around here. And then Cecil is here, and the two guys are over here. So even if you moved over here, you're still going to be hitting your allies who are here and Cecil who's over here just to try and hit all Okay. Change of plan. Um, I grasp my mace and I hold it to my hand, uh, to my heart. And I say, uh, O Father of the Deep, grant me your blessing. Um, and as I say this, um, out of the moisture in the air, this trident begins to form. I cast Spiritual Weapon as a bonus action. Okay. Um, and I can use it to attack as well this time. I'm casting it at second level. Give me a quick perception check, Falks, as you're doing this. Can I use my passive? <laughs> no. Quick perception check. <laughs> Can you use this it's a high DC, but um, it's kind of neat if you manage to get it. Beat 16 for me. Twenty-four. <laughs> Notice yes. something very interesting. The trident that you summon, the trident that the creatures are using, are of the exact same design may continue. Do they notice this? No reaction. Fair enough. Perhaps on their we'll turn, but react. right now there is no reaction. Let's see if they react to this. I shout out, by the power of Thale, I smite you all. And I smash the closest one, the one who... Um, or Celia attacked in the face with my mace, as okay. my spiritual weapon hits the other person. Okay. So, let's go with my physical attack first. He's very bloodied, so go ahead and make the attack and see if you can down him. Fourteen to hit with the mace. With that the warhammer, I should say. That's three damage <laughs> um, on the not first gonna day. not going to do it. Um, he's not down yet. In that case, can my spiritual weapon attack him? Yeah, for sure. The eight plus your spell casting modifier. I'm ca I cast spiritual weapon at second level. Oh. Um, so okay. it's... Eight, it's... I believe. Actually, no. It would have to be third level for it to be... I cast that normal level, it's just one day. Yeah, because it's not worth up casting it second. Eleven. Yeah, that'll pick it up. All right, okay. Um, the trident smashes into the creature, um, impaling it onto the ground, and you just... <laughs> Um, and then no movement whatsoever as blood begins to leak out of the creature. Oh. Magic Man? He's back. You okay? He's back. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Do you want to move, Falks? I'll stay engaged in melee. Okay. So, top of the round. Of the round, Cecil, you're up first. Yeah, what would you like to do? Um, I oh, you cannot do anything right now, unfortunately. I need the wisdom saving throw from you. Okay, okay, you're looking to beat a 12, I think. 12, yeah, it's a six. <laughs> unfortunately, you struggle against the chains, but they don't, they don't give at the moment. Um, seeing this, the creature, uh, the creatures attacking you now turn their attention to the party. Um, the other melee guy rushes up to the party. 
Oh, all right. Okay, he's going to go ahead and try to attack Theodore. Huh? That should be interesting. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe he does something. Natural twenty. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Wow. Okay, wait. Let me just calculate that damage. So, uh, that is gonna be a bloody tear, uh -huh. though. <laughs> uh, he rushes past us. Do we get attacks of opportunity? <laughs> he rushes towards you, like he's engaged with you guys at the moment. Um, okay, he lands his attack on Theodore. Um. As he does so, uh, so you sort of see the creature reaching out, its, it's jaw opening up. This is why, by the way, I wanted to emphasize the really long teeth that it has that that picture doesn't actually have. And it clamps down on the, uh, on the arm of Theodore and you see a spurt of blood coming out of him. You hear a gasp coming out of him briefly. Um, second attack is gonna go out, and it's going to go to Falks, who is with us, not yes, with us. Yes, Hi, I'm Falks. Here. Okay, I'm cool. Here. And that is gonna be 18 to hit, which I think hits. Yes. It does, it does hit. hit. It does Unless hit. you have something to deter. I can use my reaction. I can use my reaction to do something. Shield of Faith? Wrath of the Storm. Thank you very much. Make a dexterity ah. saving throw. It would do the damage first, though, before that. So it does the damage, which is 12 um, piercing damage. And it needs to make a deck saving throw. Yeah, it fails. No way. It got a 4. <laughs> okay, so um, you take 2d8 thunder damage. Okay. Creature is blasted back with a, with a loud booming sound that echoes around the chamber. How much damage does it take? 13. Ooh. Wow, Tempest Clary coming in hot. Meanwhile, you see the other, um, uh, the other spell, the first spellcaster, the one who initially cast uh, the hold uh, spell on on Cecil, turning towards you guys, um, raising its arm up, and it also summons a watery trident, which is is going to hurl towards you guys, towards. Number three, which is peak. Peak. It is going to be 22 to hit. It hits. And that is four damage. That, that, that's four piercing damage. Ooh. I think it's, it's piercing. Uh, yeah, let's... Well, it's force damage, technically. Okay. Okay. The watery spear flies through the air, colliding with you, peak. As it pierces you, the water pff, dissipates. The other... Spellcaster. Mm -hmm. The other spellcaster. Sure, let's use this. Why not? Why not? The other spellcaster, you see it bringing its arms together. Actually, it's. See who is doing it to? It's doing it to Theodore. Miss <laughs> Keen. Um, uh, let's see if it actually hits. It does not hit. Okay, so it brings its arms together and you suddenly see this surge of water, like a, a, a deluging spray firing outwards towards Theodore. And just before, um, just before the water connects, you see um, him pressing his hand to his body and you see this brief purple shimmer engulfing him. Um, and the water collides offwards at the last moment. That's his turn. Eek, you're up next. Cecilia, you're on deck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Peek, how's everyone doing? Is everyone okay, health-wise? Yeah? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is still the one of the creatures right in front of me, is that correct? No, that one's down. Oh, that's one down. That's one being down. The is still, is still there. Okay. Um, in that case, I would like to... I am going to cast a ice knife again. Keeping it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, like, on the same one that I've thrown before. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yes, I'll go ahead and summon an, a shard of ice. Oh, 13. 13 will hit. 13 will hit. Fantastic. They're pretty low AC. <laughs> okay. Pretty low, he says, after I missed every with... time. You got six! With I can't six... do anything with six. With six normal damage, and then four yeah. damage from the shard. So a total of ten. He's very bloodied. What about the very, five Very, very bloodied. Yeah, that, that's together, I'm assuming, right? That's together, yes. Six and, okay. six and four, yeah. Um, I can't do much besides that. Um, all, all the other that's stuff I good. have. Yeah. So, yes, I will then... Um, is there, in front of me, is there anyone? Because I am a bit... I am half health. Is there anyone that I can there, walk? There is, uh, as in enemies, there is the, um, the creature who is attacking your group who is next to you but not focused on you right now. He's more focused on Theodore and Falks at the moment. All right, then, no, I stay where I am. Okay, that's fine. Theodore needs some healing. I just, uh, uh, I'm okay. Celia, <laughs> <laughs> you're up next. Falks, you're on deck. Celia, okay, what so, are you doing? Steady aim. Um, I grab my crossbow. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, and I aim and I shoot at the one who is blasting water at Theodore. He's the closest, okay. right? Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> You're rolling with advantage if you're steady aiming. Yeah. So 14, does that hit? I hit that. Uh -huh. 13 hits, so 14 hits. Okay, all right. Five damage? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. Five damage. Yeah. Dex is two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sadly. All right. Okay. He is looking the worse for wear. Let's put it that way. Um, That'll be your turn. So, Falks, you're up next. What do you want to do, buddy? I can't hear what you're saying, mate. Is the one I see the attack the closest one to me? Um, no, the closest one to you guys is the one who's engaged you in melee. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack that guy. Okay, go for it. I smash him in the face with my mace. He's looking pretty bloodied. Smash him in the face with a mace. Oh, okay. I almost crit, but I didn't quite crit. 24. That'll hit. It's 9 damage. 9 damage. Wait, you're attacking the melee guy or the one that Arcelia was attacking? The melee guy. The melee All right. Guy. Okay. Sorry. He's not looking pretty bloodied. He's bloodied now with nine damage. All right. Um, and after I smack him in the face, um, remember that water trident which speared the other guy? Mm -hmm. um, the water reforms. It doesn't go out. No, the water reforms so that the trident is on the other end now. And mm -hmm. it just shoots out um, up into the air. And down to the guy that I'm attacking. Sure, go for it. Uh, that's an attack. Sorry, it's been a while. No worries. Twenty-four to hit. I'll hit. Twenty-four 
9 damage. Ooh, all right, okay. The spear um, impales him to the ground, um, and you see his head smacking against the ground, and then nothing, no reaction. He's out of the fight. Okay. Nice. You see Theodore. Um, the purple shimmering now has dissipated slightly around his body, raising his hand up towards... Um, the spellcaster that you were attacking, Arcelia. There is... Sure. Um, let me just roll that. Give me one second. That'll be enough. For a moment, there is this brief movement in the air, almost like the air sort of... Um, sort of like w w when you see a hot pavement... And you can see in the distance it sort of shimmers slightly. Distance, like like the, 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 the buildings and stuff move slightly in the heat of it. There's this brief movement through the air. Um, and you see the spellcaster getting smacked backwards um, and then dropping down to the ground. But I dealt with that one. There's still one left. Cecil, top of the round. Wisdom saving throw, please. Eh, no. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> ah, I keep getting sixes! No! no! <laughs> I need you uh, to be the 12! That was <laughs> another six. Hey, if we add up all the sixes that I got, that's more than 12. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, dude. Oh, hold on. Wait a bit. Um, uh... My ins my point of inspiration. Can I use that for saving throws? Yeah, I, of course. I can, can, can't I? Then yeah. okay, then I'm going to cash in my my. Uh... Just FYI, this is the last guy standing, and this wisdom saving throw is done at the end of your turn. This guy like probably could be ended at the by end your... of the turn. It's, it's a bit metagamey to tell you, but this guy can probably be ended by your allies. I don't know if you want to use your inspiration now because you're not going to have the chance to do anything anyway. Yeah, no, okay, fine. No, fair enough, fair enough. You're right, you're right. You're right. Okay, so I that brings it. it to the creature's turn. Um, he is also going to raise his hands up towards you guys, because he hasn't done this yet. Um, and he's going to try and do the same water surging move. And he's going to aim for number four, Theodore, again. <laughs> oh, he they got don't six. like Theodore. Huh? They really don't like Theodore. They don't. He got a six, though. Um, so, yeah, Theo, um, he doesn't even, um, like, there's no shimmering. He just moves out of the way. The creature doesn't seem to be aiming correctly and just poof, um, out into nothingness. Peek, you're up next. Arcelia, you're on deck. Peek, what do you want to do, buddy? Um, I think Peek wants to remove gap between me and this enemy. So I would like to rush up while... While casting Shillelay on my on my quarter staff, and as soon as I am within range in front of him, I would like to whack him with the quarter staff. You nice. say the verbal component. Shillelay. Uh, Shillelay. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Yes, I should be able to use my I can use my spellcasting ability instead of strength for it and I roll yep. a d8 instead so I'm gonna go ahead and attack I get a 16 I'll hit. to hit and the damage is uh, 5 alright okay your court staff smacks into the creature uh, it takes 5 damage Anything else you want to do? Um, I've already used that as a bonus action. Actually, yes, hold on. Um, I feel like I'm running a, sh a tad short. Actually, no, 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 no. Anyone, anyone's really badly injured? No, right? No. Theodore. I'm okay. No, Theo's fine. Theo's fine. Theo's, Theo's fine. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, in that case, I might cast Healing Word at first level on myself. 
You <laughs> use your action and bonus action, though. Uh, yes, you're right. I can't. So, no, that's it. You're right. That's Just it. have the rest of your movement. You have 15 feet of movement if that's you need it. it. That's fine. Okay. That's it. All right. Arcelia, you're up next. Falx, you're on deck. Arcelia, what you doing? How, how bloody is the last one? He's not bloodied at the moment. This is the first time he's taken damage, actually. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to grab my crossbow again because he's far away, and I steady aim. Mm -hmm. Um, and I shoot, but while I do that, can I speak to him and ask him to stop fighting? The three seconds. Your friends are dead! Can you put down your arms? Equation check. Oh god. <laughs> okay. This is a high DC, I'm just saying you from now. Persuasion? Okay. Or a swashbuckler. I think you have like bonuses to put to charisma or something. So, well, that didn't work. I got a tree. Um, the answer is that wild mistin lives. Great. Okay, and now I'm gonna shoot to an, an aim. Go for it. Plus five. annoying 11 does 11 hit 11 does not to hit unfortunately sorry that's very annoying okay it's falx annoying. that means you're up next unfortunately arcelia your shot goes wild falx what do you want to do about this i'm tired of these things and their impudence so i point <laughs> my mace towards the last one who's a good few feet away from me and um, the trident from behind me just reforms and shoots towards it, as it does since using the spiritual weapon as a bonus action. Mm -hmm. um, a stream of water just uh, goes uh, out of it and shoots at a much higher velocity towards it. I'm casting Guiding Bolt. Do it. Okay, cool. I love it. Uh, do the Guiding Bolt attack first. Twenty-two to hit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> ben is just like there. <laughs> ben is damage. sitting there with his six rolls. <laughs> Twelve. Damage. I don't know wow. what it is. Just six all the time. He is bloodied at this point. Um, make the spiritual weapon attack. Yeah, so the first bolt of water, so to speak, like smacks him across the face and turns his face like, what, 360 degrees? Oh. <laughs> nice. Ah, unfortunately, I rolled a 10 for the spiritual weapon. Will not hit. Sorry about that. It just splashes into the wall behind him. Okay. Let's see if. Once again, an NPC will take the glory for your kill, guys. Um, Theodore is gonna go wait, ahead. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Oh? I, have, I have advantage on that roll because of Guiding Bolt. Oh, oh. Guiding Bolt gives you advantage. Oh, okay, cool. Go for it. Taking back the opportunity to take the kill. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> 25. That'll hit. Harass it. 15 damage. What? I rolled max. Oh my god, what's your spell casting modifier? Holy shit. Okay. Wait, no, less, because I added my proficiency by mistake to the damage. No, just the spell casting modifier. Uh, so it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Damn. Oh, hi. That'll still do it, though. Okay. Um, the trident smacks into the creature, impales it, reach, uh, the trident swoops upwards before bringing it poof, crashing back down to the ground with a satisfying and very final thud. 
and I don't know if you were listening along at home to the soundtrack that I posted, but if you did, I actually managed to time that exactly with the ending of a song, so it sounded great on my end. Don't know if it was on your end. Um, <laughs> and that is over. Looks like fish for lunch, guys. And we're going to take a five-minute break because I on that note. need to go and pee. <laughs> <laughs> on that um, fishy note, uh, we're going to take five minutes. Or what time is it? It's well, three minutes to. We'll come back at five past. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Twitchies, we'll see you at five past ten. Five past ten.
Cool. Hello, Twitchies. We're back again. Right. So, combat is over. The um, sea folk, the fish folk, lie dead at your feet. You are within this temple that appears to, now that you look at it, is so illuminated by this pale white light coming in from the various slits along the circumference, along the walls themselves, and also this large room in the middle with a singular door set into it that reaches up towards the ceiling. What are you guys doing? Um, just to be on the safe side, uh, hmm? Peak would like to cast Healing Word on himself because he took a bit of a battering there. Okay, go for it. And I roll... Ooh, Splendid 11. Nice. And um, nice. What's in the middle of the room? The large... Um, the middle of the temple is this large circular room. Um, that takes up the entirety of the center of the room. It's about 30 feet across with a door set into it, also made out of wood. And this room, its walls rise up to the top of the ceiling. Apart from that, the room is quite, uh, sorry, the temple is quite empty apart from the debris scattered along the floor that appears to have come from the, uh, appears to have fallen from the ceiling itself. Um. Does Peak get a sense that what he sensed earlier on from behind the door were those creatures? Yes. Yes, okay, so I can rule that out. Um, Cecil would like to go to the door. Sure. And try to open the door. Does but ever so little... slightly, not like not like all the way, just like a little bit. There's a little bit of give, and then it stops. Ah, I think we might need some more water here, Arcelia. I got some handy. Sure. I'm putting water on the door. <laughs> this means I'm putting water on the door. <laughs> Okay. While you're doing that, I just want to check what are the other two doing? What are Falx and Peak doing? Um, I think I mean, Peak would. This is you know, this is amazing for Peak. Uh, uh, he finds it interesting overall. I think I just try to investigate the surroundings, see if there's any like unique markings uh, on the pillars or walls. There are no pillars around you. However, as you step okay. up to, to the wall, you can see the pale white light coming in from one of the window slits. And as you step up to it, you can look outside. Outside, you see a dark, starry night. Lit only by a pale white moon and a canvas of stars. Might I remind you that when you came in I was gonna the say. temple just a few minutes ago, it was the middle of the afternoon, and hot and sunny and bright. And it had no windows outside. Two. Yeah. I immediately point this out to the rest of the party and say um, this is is this some sort of uh, plane magic? Your detect magic is still running, I believe. Okay. Um, it would be, but 10 minutes, right? It is 10 have, did the fight the fight didn't last that long, did it? The fight lasted like a minute at tops. Okay. I think it was like three rounds. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can definitely sense divine magic here. Okay. Um unfortunately I don't have anything to deal with this, but I do relay this information definitely to Falx. Can I Roll maybe knowledge religion, um, or maybe an insight check to 
try to understand what the significance of what's going on around us is in relation to Thale or this other being which we're discovering about? First. What am I rolling? Religion. Not bad. <laughs> you know that the domain of Thale is waves and storms and sea. Rarely have you ever read about moonlight and dark starry skies. However, you know that moon can affect the tides, but you're not sure what to make of this, Falks. I don't know where we are right now, but we're not mm. where we were. Meanwhile, Marcelia, water splashes against the wooden door. Just like earlier, the wet stain is absorbed into the wood, and with a creak, the door opens. And you can see a small room inside. About 30 feet across, quite empty, with the ceiling reaching up as you can peer through the door reaching up towards the dome above. Okay, what's in the room? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, we have to yeah. be careful because uh -huh. it might be like what has happened before, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that if we step through the door closes. So are we stepping in it? Or are we not stepping in it? You know what? Wait. I have an idea. Yes. Can I look through the room with the spyglass? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As you do so, you notice that the creature with the red eyes is not at this level. But as you peer downwards, you can see Red eyes appearing in the gloom below you, about 50 feet down. Looking at us? Looking directly at you, Falx. Interesting, okay, well. Hmm. <laughs> we tried looking uh, out the window with, the, with it. That's a good point. The spyglass? Okay, look. Hmm. Yeah. Try looking outside the windows? Nothing appears in the spy glass. And what about in the room which they just opened? Anything particular? You see only blackness. The only time that you see anything else is when you peer downwards towards the creature itself. Well, it doesn't seem like there's any other uh, place to go. Wait, wait, so, shall, we, shall we just throw Theodore in there and see what happens? I'm not going to see no to that. Now look! Does, does anyone know anything about the Maiden that they mentioned? That the Guardians are... What guarding? Maiden? Well, when I was speaking to them, they said they, that they were Guardians. And that they were guarding the Maiden. Oh, that, that this really? Is the the maiden. So does anyone ah. know anything about that? Fox, have you ever heard of a Maiden? In relation to Thale? Well, I'll have you know I'm the fairest of maidens. Um, but yeah, should I roll a religion check on that? Um, no. No. Okay. Yeah. You remember something. You do remember at one point reading through the dusty tomes ages ago in the Temple of Cranog um, about a long-lost love of Thale, um, one referred to as the Maiden. 
The book that you were reading, you remember it starkly because several pages out of it had been torn out. And you had only read about his unrequited love for this maiden, this person. I think the monster is the maiden. Excuse me? You heard me. Those things were guarding the maiden, you said? Well, well the yes. only other thing the only the other thing I can see is that thing down there. Yeah, but that thing might also be guarding the maiden. That's also a possibility, but yeah. It's one of those What are things. the odds what are the odds that it's not the maiden though? The thing is if it is the maiden, I can't kill it. Why not? Because he's Tails follower. It, it's 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 an mythology that this thing, if it is what I think it is, is essentially the what <laughs> I don't know what to call it. The paramour of my god? The mistress of my god? Par oh. oh, a significant other of your god. It wouldn't, but do we know how that story ends exactly? Like, was there any mention of... Yeah, why is she locked away in an other world? Yeah. Above the sea. Away yeah. from her. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Can I, can what, I roll what, something? what I want to know is if we go down there and if we face this thing, Falx, Uncle, will you be protecting us or not? See, this is why I think we should really uh, think about this before doing anything and try to figure out as much as we can. I agree. Because whatever we find out really influences the answer to that question, my friend. Uh, Theodore, do you have any wisdom for us? Well, if I could interject. Whatever creatures down there is guarding the artifact that we need to get to. Of For course. me, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've not heard of any maiden. However, I will admit that I have heard people referring to this place as the Isle of the Maiden. I don't know if that makes any difference to you, Falx. But to the best of my knowledge... There ain't no maiden down there. Can I can I look through the the spyglass? Would it work if I did it? The way the spyglass is is that the very end of it is actually a spherical gem, oh. which is why Falx can look through it by placing it into his empty eye sockets. I can help you if you really want to look through it. <laughs> you really have it's to an look option. No, I just, I would like a better description of what exactly is down there apart from just red eyes. It'll cost you a night to find out. What? So it'll cost you a night to find out. <laughs> I'm okay, I like my eyes. Okay. I'm the only one without the eye patch here, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Our, our options are, we either just walk into the room. We walk into the room. Um, the only thing is, we we haven't really figured out what the window and the stars mean right now, in this room. As interesting as the and stars is, and the moon might be. Very interesting to speak, but... Extremely, yeah. yes. Our, our way to go forward is finding the artifact for Mr. T. Um, Before we do that, if Peak goes close to the window and pulls out the amulet from underneath his cloak that he's holding, mm -hmm. does anything weird happen or different? 
you reach into your robes and pull out the crescent-shaped amulet. As it catches the moonlight peak, the amulet begins to glow slightly, setting off um, a whitish hue, and feels a little bit lighter in your hands. This is going to get so confusing. Um, right. What amulet? What was that? Sorry. What amulet? So, amulet? no, no, that's fine. I can, I can give you a quick recap. So there have been a few moments throughout the, throughout the sessions where Peak is like always about to do something and he reaches in and he kind of holds onto a, an amulet. Okay. Um, uh, and he always tries to do it when it's either night or there's a moon. Um, he does this, you know, he's not hiding anything, and he does this, in fact, right now, quite openly with you guys. And you can see what he holds in his hand is what uh, Paul described, which is like a crescent shape moon, and it's kind of silver looking and adjourned with a few jewels on it. Okay. Give me an arcana and check, Peek. Make an arcana check. Yes, please. Not the best. It's a nine. Okay. Just a friendly reminder that we will have inspiration, just saying. Should I do that now? Oh. I'm worried we're going to run into a big bad guy at the end. And the final roll <laughs> will be a one. And I don't have an inspiration to use. Fair play. Um, as Peak does this and it's glowing until Paul is kind of looking at what, what he's doing, um, uh, Peak kind of explains, this, um, this was passed down my family for generations, and it was the last gift my father gave me. Um, it has brought me luck along my journeys, uh, but I am yet to find out exactly what mystical powers it might possess. The rumor has it that it was bestowed um, as a gift to my great, 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 great grandfather um, when uh, my druid sect was first formed. Okay. And why? Nothing happens, to speak. Nothing happens. No, nothing that you notice at the moment. So enraptured are you by the fact that the penumbra is actually glowing at the moment. Oh, damn it, Your whole I use focus is on this. You can if you want to. It's up to you. I don't know what you guys think. I don't want to waste too much time here because we do need to move forward. Um, should I hold on to my inspiration? Please never waste of time. I, I think I think this is something that we need to know before moving forward. Um, if anything, I can can I give him my inspiration? Mm, no, no, unfortunately, no. You know what? Yo, I can't hear you, uh, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, can I can I use the help action? Maybe not for this, unfortunately. Um. YOLO, let's let's do it. Peak is, is, is really is really focused on this and waiting for something else to happen. So I am going to roll again. Please, please, please don't make this a waste. Worse four. Let's go. Oh, no. oh no. Oh no. Sorry, buddy. Ah, no, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I kind of However, tap it. I, it I tap is... it. Um, I just want to note, for, for, for the sake of clarity, Peak, the penumbra is glowing when the moonlight is touching it. When you move it away from the moonlight, the glow diminishes and stops. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have... Can I... How thick is a rapier? Can I use my dagger to point the moonlight into the room? Sure. Nothing happens. I don't know. Maybe I know too. what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Get the moonlight in the room properly. Yeah. Um, can, we, can we light the fire? 
light a fire. I'm a very light my fire. Okay. <laughs> Can we light the fire to maybe see if there's a reaction? Like, it is water, like, themed. So fire should bring out anything that doesn't like it. Does that make you sense? clearly are not familiar with Pokemon. No, I'm not. <laughs> but it, that, yeah, no, I don't think we should light the fire. I think we should just step through the door. Okay. Uh, let's just step through the door and see what happens. Let's step through the door. If you um, like, Cecil can go first. I will no, Fox will, will join you. Yeah, Cecil, uh, Cecil steps through the door. As soon as the first person steps through, the door begins to slowly close. Oh, okay. Ooh! Rush. <laughs> this is a rush death through. trap. This rush. is a death trap. Oh, no, rush it's through, not. And the door... <laughs> closes is behind you. You find yourself in a circular room about 30 feet in diameter, quite tight. You notice moonlight shining in. Part of the ceiling has long since fallen away um, and there's debris down on the floor. Moonlight is pouring in through this hole in the, in the roof. All of a sudden there's a grating sound. Stone rushing against stone and you see all around you several horizontal slits opening up in the wall about 10 feet up and water begins to pour into the room at the same time in front of you along the wall written all along the wall so you actually have to turn your head to read the whole thing appear runes these runes for a moment seem foreign, strange, but it's almost like when your eyes adjust to darkness. Your eyes adjust to the runes, and for some reason, even though they're written in an alphabet that you've never seen before, you're able to read them. Hmm. And they read, Only a child of the moon and tides may pass beyond. Only Water a... begins to... Sorry, only a child of the moon and tides may pass beyond. Well? Water begins to pour into the room. It is... Wa uh, the water in the room begins to rise slowly. It is now at the level of your toes. And if you permit me, one moment... He's gonna get a real bucket of water. <laughs> For effect. For effect. Trip, trip, trip. Fox, would you be a child of the moon and tide if you were like raised in your sect or in your religion? Maybe. I. Or you, or you, maybe. I, I can. I can guarantee that I am definitely a child of the moon. What? There's a sand time. The time starts now. Oh, oh my moon. god. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. So I'm definitely a child of the moon. Because I am uh -huh. a, I am a moon druid, and um, okay. and this pendant is definitely related to the moon. I um, have approximately two minutes. If I pull my pendant out in the moonlight, what happens? Give me an Arcana check again. Oh, come on, let's go. What? Let's go. Let's go. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. Well, I don't need the fucking timer then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so You Every know how moon, long I took. You know how long moon. I took designing every this moon. challenge. You know how long. <laughs> every moon I'm going to run so, into, I'm just going <laughs> to. So, this. as you take out the penumbra from your robes um, and move it into the moonlight, penumbra begins to glow once more. You notice the runes along the wall carved into the black, uh, the black spiky barnacle begin to glow as well with the same whitish hue. With that arcana check, you feel magic coming out of the penumbra. You realize 
that it is attached in some way to the spell weave. Not only that, you sense that the magic of the penumbra is very similar in nature to the magic that you sensed earlier, the divine magic from this very temple. As the penumbra is illuminated and the runes begin to glow, water pouring into the room suddenly increases tenfold. And within a matter of seconds, you are all instantly engulfed in water. Not what I was hoping for, but... <laughs> but you can breathe. What? The water swirls around you, you can see the shapes, the forms of your companions in the water around you. Um, and there's a sudden feeling of rushing downwards. This torrent all around you suddenly comes to a stop and water um, collapses all around you and you can see your companions and you can see that you are standing in, lack of a better term, field of water. Water level is about four or five inches below your feet. It stretches outwards into the distance as far as the horizon. You look upwards and can see a patchy black and white sky reaching up above you. No moon or stars in sight. And often the distance, about 50 feet away or something like that, is a large form that appears to be hunched over um, a large creature. No. No. <laughs> is it? Is it the thing I've been seeing? It's not looking at you. Do you have this sense, Falx, that this is the creature that you have been searching for this entire time? Can, does does Falx's um, spell of language still work on me? Yeah. Well, it depends. How long is that again? Let me check. One hour. Oh, yes. Um, so I, I tentatively say, hello? No response. Um, just something to think about out of character. It's interesting how this temple slash prison is also a mix, it feels like it's a mix of two gods. We've got tail, and then we've got what what I what what the moon has been reacting to my pendant, um, what's which the name? sorry, what, what's the name of your of your? Well, her name. I, I mean, Paul can rectify or correct me. Is 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 Luna? Um, in fact, the, the original place where I'm from is called Luna's Rest. Um, so just food for thoughts. I, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, it's it's odd. Like it's a it's like a mix of two things, isn't it? Mm -hmm, I agree with that. Holy shit! Can I step towards her? What if the maiden is Luna or some so fucking that's what weird I stuff? Okay, Can go I on. It. Please be done with As you guys begin to walk towards this creature, you take a look again around your surroundings, and I, I just want to re-emphasize, there are no landmarks whatsoever in sight. This water continuing onwards and onwards till the very end of the horizon. Not still, slightly choppy, the water does move, there are ripples as you move through it, and as you cast your eyes behind you, you can see that there appears to be a door that has formed a few paces away from where you first landed. It's just a door standing right there. There's no back to it, no wall to it, just a door to nothing. Water carries on forever, and you see the dark 
white and black starless sky above you. And as you step towards this creature, you hear <coughs> soft, crying, sobbing sounds of a creature in anguish. This as you creature. Come closer, Sorry, go on. As you come closer, you can see that the creature itself is about the size of the land shark that you fought many, many weeks ago. Um, about the size of, say, a large bus or something like that. If I could describe it, it looks very similar to um, a fat larva or caterpillar. Its skin is darkish red-brown and ribbed in nature. Mm. Um, it has several small feet at the bottom of it, but there doesn't seem to be a head or a tail to it. Rather, rising up out of the top of it, as you get closer, you can see a woman's form down to the stomach and fusing with the rest of the creature. The woman is hunched over um, and seems to be holding herself tightly. And you can sense that the sobbing sound is coming from the woman. Mm. Can she hear us? Can, does she know we're there? She has made no reaction to you, even as you have called out. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask all of you to stay where you are so that we don't all die. Can I go touch the creature? As you get within about 20 feet of it or so, you see the form of the woman rising upwards. She is not wearing any clothing whatsoever. Um, you can see that she has long, dark red hair that falls beyond her shoulders and comes down to the back, of, um, to the small of her back. And she is very beautiful. Um, there's just one thing strange about her. The darkish red glow that is coming from her eyes. She looks at you with tears streaming down her cheeks. Her mouth is curved into an almost permanent looking frown. She looks at you. The maiden, I presume? Hello? <laughs> tears simply continue to stream down her cheeks as she gazes at you. If I hold the penumbra in front of her. Does she react in any way? Did he send you? Is she speaking common? Okay. She is speaking a language you can understand. A language I can understand. Just me or no, is everyone? No, no. You can understand her. When you say you, you mean she, like the party. She doesn't... Yes, like, she doesn't... Okay. There's something strange and um, almost deep the words that she's saying, but she cannot, okay. you can understand what she's saying. Falks uh, kneels. Uh, he send you. Peak responds by saying, we, we mean no harm. Who, who are you referring to? Do you mean Tail? Don't mention his name here. So I think, I think he is that one. So he did send you then? No, he did not. No, he did not. I am a servant of Thale. Don't say that. And we are not with him. We're not with, we don't know him. We do not know him. <laughs> we just stumbled in upon him, that's it. Don't play about that, you know. It's like we okay, went into a, I don't know, a dog day and I'm like, I am the police. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna lie about that, eh? Like, that's an important thing. But why would you say it out loud? Really? Um, we... So my wretched husband sent you here, dog. And why? To taunt me after 800 years? Why are you here? Who, who are you? Who are you? And we, like I said, we mean you no harm. We are here for a different purpose. I am the maiden. Known by any other name? Why would I need that? I'm the maiden of the moon and the maiden of the tides. I need no other name. Or rather, I was. For my wretched husband left me here. I'm starting to take offense at this person calling Pale Wretched. I get out the spyglass and I say, This led us here. She doesn't appear to react to that. She just goes, I don't know what that is. Why would Thale want to taunt you? Well, he's left me here for 800 years. I assume that he's just sent you here to either put me out of my... I can't say that on stream. Put me out of my misery, or otherwise just to make me feel bad about being here just because I took this blasted ring. You see for a moment as her hand gestures upwards. There is indeed a um, golden ring set upon her middle finger. So why do you still wear this, that, that ring if he punished you so severely for taking it off? While you say that, Arcelia, a hand lands upon your shoulders. Excuse you me? hear from quietly behind you, that is what we have come to get. Yeah, no, I got that far. <laughs> I... So why do you still that wear that ring when your husband himself has banished you here for taking it off? It's mine. Yeah. Why do you ask? It's well, mine. Not... I told him it's mine. Well, would you not be appeasing your husband? Well, if I don't told... need him. But yet you still wear his ring. It's not his. It's probably why he doesn't like it in the first place. I found mm -hmm. it, and it's mine. And where did you find it exactly? That, my dear, is none of your business. But, but I am seeing as I haven't had visitors in a long time, I'll entertain you. I found it upon the tides. It was brought to me. By your own tides? Yes. That's very fortunate. Can I see it a bit better? Of course. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> oh, what's my persuasion? I um, mean, you don't need to roll high, honestly. Holy shit. <laughs> 17, okay. <laughs> she goes... Of course you can, dear. And she sort of extends her hand downward over the body of this large larva for you to see it closer. Can I grab her hand? You what? can try. Give me a grapple check. As in, are you grabbing or are you just like I'm like taking her hand and, and, and bowing slightly while inspecting. Okay, sure. What you see is a golden ring with a gem set into it. The gem is squarish in nature and has a dark purple tinge to it. Okay. Give me an arcana check, Arcelia. Hey, Macarena. Ooh, hey, Macarena. 22. An unfamiliar feeling to you. But not one that you haven't experienced before. 
What what do you mean? You feel the faintest trends, the faintest trails of spell weave emitting outwards from this ring. And it feels very uncomfortable. Can I touch it? Can I touch the ring? Sure. Very tenderly, while still holding her hand, just does anything happen? It feels very warm. Gem feels very warm. My oh my, such a beautiful ring. Yes. <laughs> just... It is, isn't it? And it's mine. And she yeah. begins to pull her hand away from you. And I grab the ring, like her hand, and pull it back and just keep looking. You can make a grapple check on that if you'd like. Oh, okay. I just want to see are close by. Is Theodore still close by? He is behind you, yes. Okay, okay. I grab Theodore with my other hand. And I just go, now! And I also take off the ring while she's pulling out her hand. <laughs> Give me a grapple check. Oh my Ooh. god. What's the grapple? Wait, what's the grapple? Uh, strength? So, no. Dex. Athletics check. Okay. okay. You don't have, come on, you go, you're good with athletics, right? <laughs> oh, Mary. <laughs> That'll be enough, because she rolled a six. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Nice! You grab her hand and force it down and she goes, What are you doing? I grab the ring, I slide it off her finger, and I I need a sleight of hand check for that. Mm. Oh, come on, you're good at sleight of hand, super. No, I'm better at athletics. Come on! (laughs) How are you better at athletics? Okay, go on, roll. I did. It's a six. Inspiration. I am I'm inspiration. inspiration. You have I'm gonna inspiration. inspiration. Do we all want to pray right now? Pray to tail. Pray to tail. Yes. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you slip the ring off at the same moment the woman goes, No! That is mine! Run. Run towards the door. Run oh. towards the door. Watch the door just not open. Are you, are you guys just all bolting? I, uh, I suggest yes. so. As much as I would as like you, more answers, yes. As you run towards the door. Oh, hold on. Wait a bit. Sorry, sorry. Um, Can I just... Can I give them like a bit of a head start by distracting her a little bit? What do you do? <laughs> um... How far down is her hand? At the moment, it's like right down, like trying to catch mm, Maybe four feet above the ground. Nice, epic. So I want to jump up on her hand and run up her arm. <laughs> <laughs> and do what? Um, scratch her with my claws, I guess. Why As don't a you distraction. Give me a performance check. Sure, sure, sure. Okay, performance. Oof. Wow, okay. I need you to beat 14. 18, baby! <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> um, as you run up her arm, Cecil, you notice immediately this, um, the skin of her arm begins to change. From uh, this beautiful peach color, it suddenly um, darkens and begins to wrinkle and shrivel. And as you get to her shoulder and she turns towards you, you can see her face has become sunken and hollowed. Um, Her eyes are glowing this deep red now. um, And her face seems almost skeleton in nature as she turns to you and screams, That was mine! Can I yell out to the other guys, run! (laughs) We can't do this far away. Oh, good, good. (laughs) You guys bolted towards the door. Um, I need everyone to give me dexterity saving throws, please, as you run towards the door. That does not include me, right? 
Um, if you're running towards door, yes. Um, I got a 19. 23. I'm, I'm, I'm still, I, I don't know. I'm, I was like distracting her. Do I keep distracting her a little bit more? I, I think I, that's, that's what fine. I'm doing. That's fine. 13. 13. All right. Okay. That's fine. Um, and Theodore. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, you see, um, Cecil, you see the front of this caterpillar thing below the woman. The front of it suddenly opens up into four bits, kind of like the Demogorgon's face from Stranger Things. Yes. Um, and all of a sudden, these white balls fly out of it, fly into the air, trailing this white mist that, um, um, that shoots towards your companions, shattering into the ground around them, not hitting any of them, but as it hits the water, there's an explosion of white dust all around them. They're about halfway towards the door. What do you want to do, Cecil? Um... Ooh... Um... Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'm. I really don't know. I kind of did that without thinking. <laughs> so... Okay, so just to give you some context. <laughs> You see her raising up one of her hands, and her hands now, her nails have elongated into long claws, and she appears to be about to swipe at you. Why don't okay. you go ahead and give me an initiative roll to see which of you reacts first? Okay, fair enough. I mean, she got six, so... I got a 13. Happens. Okay, you can take your reaction before her. Um, I would like to, um, jump off of her arm. How far okay. can you leap? Hmm? How far How can far I leap? Can you, leap? can you, like, just fly towards us? I don't think I can. I was, I was thinking maybe if I position myself well enough, she might throw me-ish. Um, uh, but I think she's just going to go to swipe at me, so that kind of went out the window there. Um, yeah, I want to jump off. I'll try to jump off. Okay, sure. Uh, you can do so. However, she's going to take an opportunity attack unless you disengage first. I do disengage. Okay, sure. You hear a behind you as her claws pass within inches of you, um, and you begin to bolt towards the door. Um, when you get about halfway there, I need you to give me a deck saving throw as well as the rest of you. Um, the rest of you are doing so with advantage because of where you are at the moment. I got a 23. So this is dex okay. with advantage, yeah? Yes. Dex saving throw with advantage. Yeah. 25. With a natural yeah, 20. That's fine. That's fine, that's fine. 14. That's all fine. All right, okay. Cecil, you see more of these white orbs shooting out over your head and landing close to your party but not hitting them. Um, Falks, um, Peak, and Arcelia, and Theodore, you guys get to the door. What do you guys want to do? Open it. Yeah. <laughs> open the door. Does right, it open? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it does no, it does not. That, it does like, not. There's, no, there's no knob. There's nothing on it. Okay, water, water, water. Can we throw water? It's surrounded by water. Okay. I, yeah, I grab we... my pouch and I'm shaking. Okay, as you splash water onto it, the wet stains are absorbed and the door creaks open. And you see beyond you the room that you were in earlier, the temple that you were in earlier. Perfect. Where is Cecil? Um, he's about 25 feet away from you at the moment. We go through. Okay. No, door, I, don't, I don't want to leave him behind. The exactly. door does begin to close, but Cecil, you have more than enough time to get through it. I need a deck saving throw, though. Uh, can we hold the door? Can um, hold... you can, can give me a I... deck to try and hold the door. Um, I'm... I'm... I'm going to try that. Can anyone help me? Same. No, definitely. You are um, going to definitely need help on this. Just so a question. I need more than one roll. Cecil, tell me. Um, 
my I as as a trait I have the feline agility, which would double my speed until end of turn. Does that count oh, here? Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. Okay. Of course it does. Awesome. Um, uh, so uh, I would. And Arcelia, what's your strength, please, combined? I got a nineteen. Huh? Eleven. That beats so a thirty. Uh, that okay. beats a thirty. Um, so you hold the door just enough as Cecil. You put in that extra effort. Your muscles and start running on all fours. Um, as you get to the door and boom, straight through it, the door closes like right at the tip of your tail with do, with a unsatisfying. Do I have enough time as Cecil is running towards us? I'm obviously on the other side of the door already, and I'm looking at this, you know, at the maiden. Do I have enough time to yell at her? I don't think she's gonna respond. You know, what was your name? What was your name before all of this? Can we hear her through the door? <laughs> you hear nothing, unfortunately, as the door slams shut. Okay. Oof. I need you all to give me perception checks. Perception. Oh, yeah. Perception. Oh, seven. Horrible. I got a 20. 16. 20. Okay, thank you. The ring, You're the ring is currently stashed somewhere. Nobody knows where. It's somewhere on me. Y'all don't know where. <laughs> Do you know where, Arcelia? I know where. You sure? Oh, hell. Where's Theodore? Where is Theodore? He is off to one side. Um, and just standing, looking at you guys with his arms uh, folded neatly behind his back. He tells you, well, thank you. And you see him reaching round his arms and there's the ring in one hand. Mm. Well, we definitely didn't see this coming, guys. How did you see the ring? <laughs> No, 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 no. You've done a good thing here. And um, I appreciate what you've done. You have helped me save a very important member of my family. Um, and for that, I am grateful. Mm -hmm. But are you going to have to kill us now? Or can we just take you back to land? I would never kill you, Arcelia. Oh, lovely. Can I roll an insight on the... Sorry, sorry. Why? Well... <sighs> I did not think it would um, be important to... I did not think it would be important to go into this. I, I thought that I'd be able to get through this without without revealing uh too much, but but Arcelia, you've grown into such a such a such an accomplished young woman and I'm so proud of you. Um honestly. I wish yes. things could have been different. And I wish I wish I could have seen you growing up from a bar. Honestly, um, it was not my wish to, to have it go this way. Uh, have what go what way? You sound like you know me. I. I know exactly you. Sorry, what was that? And how exactly would you know me? Well, the time for the disguises and illusions have uh, long gone by, I suppose. Theodore White Bay raises his hand and sort of waves it across his face, and you see his form changing um the 
beard falls away, um, revealing um, a clean-shaven face beneath. The um, hair begins to grow longer and becomes raven black, reaching down to the small of his back. Um, even the clothes begin to shift, um, becoming these black robes wrapped around him. The chest <laughs> grows outwards, and the form takes on an hourglass shape. And you see what appears to be an older Arcelia standing in front of you. Peek is like, uh, okay, I'm confused now. <laughs> what? Is that my mother? I, Arcelia. What? 25 years ago. What? I was forced to leave you with your father. Because I was told that if I did not do so, both of you would be in mortal peril. I are an organization that I did not wish you get involved with I my name is Jane Withspring and I am your mother can I sit down like I just want I just want to sit down <laughs> like what just happened <laughs> what? my mother died what are you talking my my mother is dead nay yeah. They let... There's so much I want to tell you, but yes, the no, more you know, that. the more you know, the more in danger you are. Well, you know what? I was raised as a pirate. Danger is almost was almost my middle name. We will speak more about this soon. Right now, we just need to get out of here. But but you 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 stick close. You you stay close. Me. Nee. Oh, yeah. Need to get out of here. I need you to take do. this back to the cult. Oh hell! And who and exactly? You What's turn happening? and you see her, so sort of pulling. Sorry, I, I forget that I'm off. Uh, I'm on camera. So sort of pulling up from the ground, like this water rises up and forms um, an a, a object that looks almost like a door made out of water i run towards her i like i dash towards her and she... i'm grabbing on me and uh, uh, a grapple chair actually you uh, she's gonna do that okay you see all of a sudden a torrent of water rising up just below you are celia and a large tentacle <laughs> Excuse me. Wrapping around you. A tentacle. Excuse me. A, a tentacle. Yes, no, I got off one. <laughs> yeah, I need octopus. you to make a grapple check. So, athletics or acrobatics? As this is going on. Um, oh. Yeah. As this is going on, the room we're now in, is it similar to the one we were before? Is it just like the You're floor the is temple. water? Oh, we're back in, in the, the temple tem now. You're we're back, back in, in the temple. The, we're back in the temple. We're seeing this, you know, going on. She, this woman who just, you know, turned out to be, you know, with pretty much doing a whole masquerade has the ring in front of us. I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I'm out of character. Are we going to let this person get away? I mean, I know it's your mother, I get it, but like us, Ghost? we've gone through, you know, everything. I don't know. Yeah, the tentacle wraps around you and grabs you, Arcelia, keeping you in place. And you see Jane yeah. looking back at you, and you notice that there are tears streaming down her cheeks as she looks at you and goes, Keep away from the cult. What Keep away cult? from the withering cult. Oh, what are you? 
Are you are you the reason why I can I can hurt people? I, why? Yeah. Why? Just let me understand. Just keep can, away from them. Just, just just tell me what you are. We come from a long line. Long line of magical users. And I see it's manifested in E2. Okay, and how do I control it? Give me a hint, something. I mean twenty-five years of abandonment and this is what you get this is what you do. Oh I did it all to protect you. Well every moment. Protection. Even this. Yeah, well, protection only goes so far. I'm an adult now. You don't know the cult. And you don't know me. Can I how far how is she is she still very far away from her mother? I mean at this point I'm just kinda like Wait, can, can, Peak and wants to in, Peak wants to intervene and help. Can I cast dispel magic? For the records, her the door is about half open at the moment. Wait, which door? Just, she has summoned the water door. Oh, okay. And the door is half open and she sort of like stepped halfway through it and she's still speaking to Arcelia right now. Can I Cast dispel magic on the door. I don't know what how what if so is it a spell? I don't think it is of third level. No, no, it is a spell. It is just let me just check. It's a fourth level spell. What she's doing. I can't do it then. Uh, can I cast dispel magic, however, on whatever is keeping Arcelia? Yes, that, I would like. Uh, to... No, that's technically also a fourth level spell. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can maybe do something. Can I, can I just fire one? Actually, hold on. Sorry, sorry. I'm just rereading it now. I can try casting. It's not guaranteed that it'll work. Okay, sure. So I'm going to try it on the door. Okay. Um, I make an ability check using my spellcasting ability. The DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. So you said it's a 4. So DC is 14. It's a 4th level spell. Okay. So my... Uh, spell casting ability would be plus three. So that's a d20 plus three. I got a four. There's a faint fizzle. Um, however, it does not take place, unfortunately. I tried. I tried. This is when I should have used my inspiration. <laughs> Can I try to do something? Yeah, sure. Can I cast command? You can try. No idea what you're saying, buddy. Nope. I, I see all of this going on, and... Um, what Peek said is right. We can't just let her get away. So I just don't want her to go to that door. So I, I uh, close my eyes and say a few words to fail and um, open them and with a big, loud, booming voice. I yell, I shout the word stop, as in stop moving. Okay. What does she need to beat? You got a 16. I can't hear you again, buddy. She passes. Okay. She looks at you, at you, Falks, and goes, E, child of Thale. He's not going to be very happy about this. She steps through the door. The door closes <laughs> behind her. And the water dissolves and dissipates. It's becoming a pool of water in the middle of the temple. A very long swear word comes out of my mouth, which I cannot say on stream. And considering what I said how the languages affect, it's in Maltese. 
<laughs> so none of us understand it then. None of us understand it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's exactly what I want. Um, quick question. What about the tentacles? Uh, the tentacle actually becomes water. Okay. It doesn't disappear. It becomes water and just splashes back onto the ground. Nice. Well, she wasn't there for most of my life, and now she disappoints again. Let's go. I don't like your mother. Neither do I. Neither do I. Neither didn't like her from the beginning. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We just risked our lives several times for this person to just walk out. We didn't even get paid. Yeah, I was about to ask, how's payment gonna go through? That's why I said, like, even if it's, like, it's not um, part of our story, it's, you know, but still it is. But it was more along the lines of, like, she's getting away and we're, we've done all of this. We have to check in Poor with shit. the crustite. <laughs> yeah, we gotta check in with the crustite. All right, then, I guess we're heading back. Oh, my word. At this point, I grab all of them. This is between us. As I have a question, though, and it might be a bit too bloody late now that she's gone. <laughs> does does the withering cult ring any bells for Peak, having lived? No, it doesn't. Okay. No. Does it ring any bells for anyone? It probably would not. Okay. God damn. Okay. As okay. you make okay. your way back to the small landing boat on the shore of the Isle of the Maiden and set sail back towards the Tide Seeker, you notice that you might have spent more time in there than you first expected. The sun has begun, become a blood red dot on the horizon. Tide Seeker set sail once more back towards the city of Aegis and the new world, loaded with more adventurers who seek many, many questions and possibly some reward from the cross side company. And that and is I, where we're going to. Can I yeah. say something? So huh? as 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 the sh as we probably pull up to Aegis, and probably okay. everyone gets ready to get off the ship, um, Cecil um, is going to sort of stay behind as you guys are sort of preparing your stuff and getting off the ship. If you're going to get off the ship, at least to go to the cross side or whatever. Um, and Cecil has made the decision to stay on as the Tide Seeker's captain. And Cecil wishes you all, I wish you all the very best of luck on the rest of your journeys. I will always be here, the captain of the Tide Seeker. This ship needs a captain. I have long since wished to captain my own vessel, and the time has come for me to stand at the helm of this glorious ship. I will always be here if you need any help, any ride, any any journey anywhere. I will take you. Um, good luck on your travels. And sort of goes up to the helm, his little little kitty walking all proud. Well, at least this one won't die. Beautiful. <laughs> is, is he playing like a hornpipe too? The cat? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, f let's let's say for added effect, Bose and Dave is is playing the hornpipe. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say you're gonna you're gonna have all the entertainment with Bose and Dave and Skidmark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Samuel Gordo. Okay, you may continue, Paul. <laughs> As the tide seeker sets off across the horizon, and Falks or Celia and Peak, you make your way through the city of Aegis was the headquarters of the cross side company that is where we're going to end this adventure and the final episode of the final group closing 
the uh, season one of Play Up Legends. Thank you all, David, Ben, Gavin, Gavin, Ben, Ziggy, Myron. Thank you all so much for joining me on this lovely adventure. Thank you, Twitchies, as well, for taking part in this. Been a long uh, adventure. It's been pretty amazing. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, yeah, man, it was great. And thank you for DMing for us. Mm -hmm. and thanks thank for you. Everybody. It was really good. Yeah. Really good. It was my pleasure, honestly. Um, I hope you enjoyed this adventure. Um, and I hope that perhaps we'll see um, a couple of you um, in season two. Um, thank you, Twitchies, for coming along with us on this adventure, and um, look forward to season two. I hope to see you guys there. Uh, we're going to be doing things live from now on, which is going to be pretty exciting as well. Thank you guys very much, and thank you, my lovely, lovely adventuring party, so much for joining me on this adventure. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Good night, Twitchies. And thank you for everybody who managed to make this possible. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so much to the people behind the scenes as well. Thank you, Don, and thank you to our lovely sponsors as well. Good night, Twitchies.